Thanks for a wonderful introduction. Almost right, but not quite. It's me and Kevin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Kevin the Kayak. Kevin is a most sensational bit of kit. And I'm very much looking forward to sharing with you, sharing with you his story. So, 10 years ago, 2008, I was 19. And my teammate and I, Alex Hibbert, were 104 days into an expedition to break the world record for the longest unsupported polar journey of all time. We walked one and a half, just under one and a half thousand miles, and we ran out of food on this day, 10 years ago. This is something which is really hard to portray to people who might not necessarily have ever run out of food. Because it's actually one of the three key things for life, right? You've got food, water, and warmth, and that is it. And it's only when you run out of one of those, when you don't have one of those, do you realise just how important it is. We lived for the last nine days of the expedition um, of butter and oats. We made them into sort of fat balls, of which, of which we chewed like apples for the last nine days to walk back into civilization. My name is George Ballard, I'm a professional explorer. I've, uh, as you rightly said, covered more than 2,000 miles fully unsupported in polar regions, guided 350 people in some of the remote, most remote corners of planet Earth, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here today. And in fact, it's more of a pleasure because it was only um, last week, in fact, when I was walking the ice road in northern Canada, and uh, I've actually just come from this, moment, this image in my mind when this Canadian guy with tattoos up to the eyeballs, naked inside his cabin as an ice road trucker, we were walking along, it was minus 30 outside and plus 30 inside his cabin, and he wound down the window and was like, hey dudes, how you doing down there? So you can imagine the transition to the TED stage isn't entirely seamless. And one of the interesting side effects of, uh, of expeditions is that you, your short term memory is entirely shot. So it doesn't take much to flunk me intellectually. So I've had to write a few notes, and I've put them inside Kevin, and, um, and hopefully we can uh, spend the next 10 minutes discovering exactly what it is uh, inside Expeditions and Adventure that allows you to discover the truth within you. As all six-year-olds, they have one simple question. Why? I hear it all the time with my nieces and nephews, like, why, daddy, why, why, why? And the simple answer, the two questions are that we're going to address today, is why bother finding out the truth? Why do you want to know about the truth? Because actually, quite often the truth is not something you necessarily want to find out about. We, um, we have a number of social media outlets today, of which some of you guys might use some of them, we dress our lives up to be <coughs> things which actually, online, aren't actually representative of ourselves. We post the most glamorous pictures online and leave out the emotional bits. And actually, some of it isn't that glamorous. Last year, uh, we set out to unearth an ancient myth. In 1728, an Inuit man dressed in full seal skins landed on the northeast coast of Scotland. He was in a kayak like Kevin. Last year, we set out to try and prove that he may well indeed have paddled the entire way from Greenland back to Scotland. But this doesn't come without its risks and uncovering uncomfortable truths. Badger. It's my bedroom. You're welcome. There's a. We can tell. There's my little window. 
But as you can tell, there's only really any room for one. Pretty sure it's going to be our last day. Uh, we're just we just paddled through the night. Ooh. After leaving the coast of Greenland, we landed into Scotland, having done something which potentially no human had done before. But the truth behind this, what it really led me to uncover, was just how frail and insignificant we or I am. And it was really only through these experiences that we have living on board a kayak, uh, literally surviving on the, 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 the surface of the North Atlantic Ocean, that allowed me to really uncover exactly how frail and insignificant we actually are here on planet Earth. We live in an unbelievable environment where actually we're not too worried about the beast from the east, although we had to change electricity, that would have been the only disaster of the day. Um, we're not too worried about it, our lives do manage to carry on, but in an environment like this, uh, out on the North Atlantic, there's literally no chance of survival. We had no backstop, we had no pickup, no, 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 nothing to rely on. It was just us living three inches off the surface of the ocean. Social media is a nightmare. It is my own nightmare as well. And in fact, it actually led me into starting a new career. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? New career, right there. At the age of 23, I thought, you know what, enough with this exploration. Mum was, my mother was delighted. She was, oh, thank God for that. He's going to settle down. He's going to, you know, find a girlfriend and have a nice family. And thank God, a relief. So I thought, Mum, do, do the right thing. I've got a job in. <laughs> and uh, this is actually where Kevin comes in. You might have thought I brought Kevin along just as a, like a, a comfort kayak. It's not at all that. This is where Kevin comes in. So life in finance. So I was um, I used to work in the city uh, of London and uh, uh, selling people things they didn't really want over the phone. Uh, is that allowed? I shouldn't say that on stage. Um, and. Uh, I had to be up very early in the morning, very early in the morning, but it still didn't stop this drive for adventure. I decided that instead of commuting to work, I would buy a blow-up kayak, call it Kevin, bought him £75 off the internet, and a risk entering the tent. And I'd paddle every day from Battersea into the city uh, of London, uh, where I would... Um, go about my day's work. And it was a bit weird because at the end of the day, when I was about to go home, everyone was sort of carrying on working. And to my boss, I was like, sorry, got to go, the tide's changed. <laughs> so it was quite a weird excuse to leave work, but it certainly was really enjoyable. Wow. It certainly was really enjoyable. And what it led me to uncover, what it, the truth that it led me to discover was that actually my passions didn't lie in working in the city. My passions lied well outside of that. I had more fun kayaking on the commute than I did in the office where I spent 12 to 16 hours each day. So that commute was actually more fun and it led me, as I said, to un uncover exactly what I was passionate about in life on planet Earth. So there really is no time like the present. There is no sort of second opportunity. You've heard of this all before. There's no, uh, no, this is not a rehearsal. So this is the time to make that change. And I was inspired, less about me now, more about someone who's inspired me massively. She is called Fatima. And in fact, I want to read a message that I sent, that she sent me this morning about her experiences on adventure. So, you know, I don't want you just to think, oh, this is a ridiculous guy who's sitting in a black kayak on stage and um, telling me about how to go and do, like, live a life of adventure because I can't drop it. This is a girl who lives an entirely uh, fantastic life uh, outside of adventure, but chose to do an adventure, chose to go through, I guess, pit ourselves against the wilderness out in Norway. Uh, Fatima, she had never cross country ski before, she'd never been on a fat bike, she'd never lived in a tent, and she had never ski tour in her life. But she chose to do this adventure. And this morning, she wrote these words to me. She said, 
This adventure was definitely a massive part that helped me a lot. I, had, I hadn't told many people, but just before I came on this adventure, I went to Mainboard, which is an interview to get into the major um, military academy here in the, in the UK, Mainboard at Sandhurst, which is one of the last selections, one of the last selection hurdles for me. I failed because of my lack of confidence. This was a massive knock to me, and, and uh, I had a lot of people almost turn their back on me after that because they thought I'd never do it, and I had one attempt left. She said I was devastated, and this adventure was the first thing after that, and I just thought, <laughs> I'm going to do it and give it a go. Despite having never run a marathon, nor did ski, ski tour at that point, or fat bike indeed, I needed something to get me out of that low point. I felt at that time I had serious, I, I seriously can't express how amazing this adventure was. To meet so many people who were so incredibly kind meant so much, and the encouragement and support they gave me was exactly the boost I needed. I will always remember this adventure. It changed me dramatically and profoundly and gave me the confidence to go on and pass my main board exams. So the confidence that Fatima drew off the back of these adventures, off the back of this adventure, was something which couldn't put into words and led her to lead a career into uh, in Sandhurst. And of course, it took her, it took a massive leap from Fatima to say, you know what, actually, this is what I want to do. This is what I, I need to do this in order to build my own confidence, to find what lies within me, to see the limits, to realize the bottoms, to realize the highs, potentially to actually strip back the monotony, strip back, or strip back what in life is so, uh, so luxurious. And that's my second question about why. And that is, why adventure? Why adversity? Why do we look to adventure and adversity to discover the truth about ourselves? And the answer is super simple. It's twofold. The first one, the first answer to this is removing outside influences. So when you're on an adventure, you don't have friends, you don't have, well you do have friends, but you don't have close <laughs> friends, you don't have colleagues, mothers, fathers, parents, girlfriends, boyfriends, partners, um, governments telling you what to do, billboards telling you what to believe, and advertisements saying this is what you should be wearing. You have none of it, and it is beautifully simple, and something which I can endorse to the ends of earth. It really strips back life to its most simplest form, where actually all that matters is food, water, and warmth. And actually, that is all that matters. That is the raw ingredients of life on planet Earth. And it gave people like Fatima, and people maybe not like myself, and potentially, hopefully, you after today, the confidence to go forward and leap into an expedition or an adventure without even thinking twice about it. The second thing is that it allows you to find perspective on life. For me, I've totally, on all these expeditions over the last 14 years, come to terms with death uh, on countless occasions, um, realise what it takes to persevere, realise what inside me is actually ignited when the going gets really, really tough and you run out of food. So through both of those things, uh, finding perspective and getting rid of outside influences, that is why adventure is so powerful. And now, I'm not going to try and tell you now that you should all go on your own adventure, but uh, we all have our own Everest. We all have our own dreams to pursue. So I want to leave you with three things. Three ideas, or one idea, um, that will hopefully combine to lead, uh, allow you to lead a life of truth to you, a true to yourself. Because I have a very small brain, it is super simple to remember, and therefore I hope you can remember it. A, B, C. All right, A stands for ambition. This is my own little acronym, which I love, and I use it all the time. A stands for ambition. Now, I know that every single person in this room has an ambition of any sort, to do something, to see someone, some person, to learn something, to visit somewhere, maybe with somebody. You all have an ambition to do something. And it hasn't got to be 
something daft like can I appear across the North Atlantic. It hasn't got to be something even more stupid like spending four months or 10% of your life living in a tent. It hasn't got to be that. It can be anything. You need to be B. Brave. You need to say to your friends and family, your parents, your mother, your, your parents, your colleagues at work, your local governments who are maybe trying to persuade you to get jobs, you need to say to them, you know what, that is not actually what I want to do. I want to go and spend a week, two months, a year, finding what it is inside me, using the power of adventure to discover the truth. And C stands for carpe diem. And it means seize the day. So, and I've had this on so many occasions, because sometimes opportunity knocks very quietly. And you've got to be so prepared to stand up, take, be ambitious when it comes to taking those opportunities. Be brave and say, that's what I want to do. And not be afraid of anything like risk or like failing when it comes to taking those opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. That is my TED talk. And I hope you... <laughs>